Hey guys, I uh, am going to try and lower the power consumption of my Raspberry Pi today. It's uh, what you might call a hard hack. What I've got here is a revision, uh, revision 2 Model B Raspberry Pi, so it's got the 512 meg chip on it. Over here is what separates the Model B from a Model A. This is a uh, USB hub as well as the Ethernet, USB Ethernet. So this port's going to stop working, and one of these two jacks is going to stop working. I'm going to remove this chip. Uh, if you've ever used a Raspberry Pi, especially under a high network load, you know that this thing gets hot. Um, I am using this Pi with a lap dock, so it plugs into one of the USB ports, and it's got its own built-in hub. And I'm using a Wi-Fi adapter plugged into the hub on the lap dock. So my goal is to reduce power consumption to get more battery life out of the lap dock. As it is, I already get five hours, which is pretty incredible. But I'm trying to improve things. First thing I've got to do is get a baseline for the power consumption. So I'm going to hook it up to a good 5 volt power supply without an SD card in it. And just try and get a baseline for how much power it's pulling. It should be about 700 milliamps. I'm now set up for current measuring. I have two re two digits of resolution in the milliamp range, so 700 milliamps should be 0 0.70. That should be pretty good. I'm not sure how much we're going to go down, or if we're even going to get to 700 without it actually booting. Got the Pi here, no card in it, and I've got here a shield that I had made. Um, I like it because it's got a barrel jack that goes into the 5 volt on the GPIO. So that's what we're going to use to power this thing. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in. Point one one. Uh, point zero seven. That's 70 milliamps. 80. Yeah, so I guess I do have to get this thing to boot. I will go get an SD card. Alright, here we go with take two. I've, uh, now got a SD card in there with uh, my standard. This is my standard SD card, so it's 32 gig Patriot. I'm gonna go go ahead and hook the power back up and see what we get for current draw. Okay. Come down at this angle. 34, 35. It's still booting up. I don't know if it's initialized the um, Ethernet chip yet. This is actually extremely energy efficient compared to what I've been told. Here I am with the hot air reflow tool. I'm just kind of warming the board in general. I've got it set to 369. It doesn't have a Fahrenheit or a Celsius on it, but I'm thinking that it's Fahrenheit because generally nothing gets desoldered with this thing at anything below 350. And it should be working at 250 if it uh if it were Celsius. So I don't know what its deal is. I'm gonna point it at a thermometer sometime and check. Okay, so I'll just start warming this thing up and then I'll try and get it out of there without destroying this whole board. I'd hate to lose $35. It's now removed. Pardon the shakiness. I don't really have a tripod for this sort of work. I'm just kind of running my soldering iron across the pads real gently to make sure that none of them are bridged. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, let me do this a little bit more. I just kind of barely touch them and just run them across the pads. There's the pads. You could see that underneath the chip was a great big heat sink. So not only was that chip getting hot to the touch, but it was apparently making the rest of the board hot too. So. <laughs> Man, that thing must have dumped a lot of heat. Here's the chip itself. It's now been desoldered. 
There we go. There's the bottom of the board. Great big metal pad. Great big metal pad. So the whole chip itself was soldered to the board. And it's got these really fine feet. Don't think it's quite a QFP package, but maybe it was before it got soldered down the first time. So it's probably a LQFP package. But something that gets hot is obviously drawing lots of current, so now it's been removed. I've now got the shield put back on. I've cooled the board down. I actually used some compressed air because I didn't feel like waiting for it to just cool naturally. Um, so it's got no Ethernet chip or USB hub chip. Um, the supporting components are generally all still there. I think I knocked a single capacitor off while I was doing it, but I left that off. Um, so let's see how the current draw is now. I don't suspect it'll be much different because I wasn't actually using the hub or the Ethernet when I did the last test, but it should be always at that level now. There we go, it's powered up. I don't know if I've killed it or if it's... Yep, yep, the activity light is blinking away. It's booting up. So. Give it some time to boot up, see if it goes back up to 32, 39 like it was before. Wow. Well, it says I'm pulling 12, but I don't know if it crashed or what. The activity light is out, the green activity. I've got power. Oh, activity blinked a little bit. Yep, there. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's probably increased CPU load. When the green activity light is on, it goes up to 18. When it's off, it's at 12. It's probably increased CPU load, not so much the LED, because the LED should only be 0 0.02, not 0 0.06, which is what we're seeing there. So, I guess it's time to do another uh, current draw test, on, or the battery life test on the lap dock. See if I can get better than five hours out of it. Because this thing's certainly drawing less power than it did before. What I've got here is the, uh, my two 512 meg pies. This one's got the blue um, audio jack, and it says made in UK. This one's got the black audio jack, and while it says made in UK, it used to say made in China, and I peeled off the sticker. It's kind of shady, but anyways. I decided to modify the Chinese one rather than my UK one. Uh, I'm going to leave the UK one alone. Okay, the USB jack is slightly different. I've got some kind of funny logo on it, and this one doesn't. And here's where I removed the USB Ethernet hub thing chip, and here's the one that still got it. So this is what I have been running on my laptop. This one, we have confirmed that it draws 200 milliamps less if it's actually booting up. So let's plug it in and see if it still works. Uh, this is the Motorola lap dock. Absolutely awesome. Turns your Pi into a laptop. Just goes from this jack here, which is a um, micro USB. Uh, you can't really see it. but And then I plug it into the USB port over here. And that's all you need for powering the Pi. It's on. Let's see if the screen comes up. There we go. Uh oh. I got no keyboard. So that USB port is not working. I thought it would be the lower USB port that would stay working. I may have to investigate that further. I've got no USB right now. I've pulled up uh, some information on the internet. Here's a, uh, a shot that the Raspberry Pi Foundation posted of the, the uh, Model A. It's kind of blurry, so I don't mind taking a picture, videoing it on my screen. But here you can see they've got one USB jack, the second is unused, no Ethernet here. Um, if I go down, you can. Uh, let's see if I can get this to move. Okay. I looked at the numbers here. Um, I don't know if I can get it on camera, but it says, yeah, right there. You can almost see it. I'm sorry, guys. Let's get it to focus on this blurry picture. 
There you go. You see that it says 2G. So this Model A has 256 megs of RAM. I have essentially created a 512 meg RAM Model A. Here's the chip I removed. You can see that when it went through their, their bath or whatever, um, maybe it was just their stencil puts lead there and then it got got flowed. So there's a lot more lead on there. Well, it's probably not lead, it's lead free, but solder on their pads than I have on mine. But anyways, uh, we've found that my USB ports don't work, so I googled the model number of that chip. It's a um, SMSC um, 9512, and you pull it up, and here inside the data sheet, um, table 2.4 USB pins. I've got, let's see if I focus this again. There you go. USB D minus zero, upstream USB D minus signal, and then the other one's the D plus signal. And here's D here's two downstreams for the two jacks. I'm only gonna have one working, so I'm just gonna jumper from this pin to that pin and from that pin to that pin. So I'll jumper around the chip that used to exist. It's interesting because uh in their picture I don't see any jumpers. So they must have some other way of doing this or they just flat didn't have any working USB pick ports when they took this picture and they put something on there afterwards. Um, but yeah, I'm looking pretty close and I don't even see um, adjoining pins joining each other. Boy, that would save a lot of time if they're right next to each other and I can just bridge the solder, solder pads. So I want, um, see it's, the name is DM0 to DM2 and DP0 to DP2. So I go up here and I got a picture of the, the chip. Here's the chip. Notice the um, corner here, the uh, silk screen on the board. Well, let's do it on this. You can see the silk screen on the board has a flat corner right there. So that's the reference so you can figure out where you're at. And um, here's DM0 and DP0. So those are right next to each other. And I've got DM2 and DP2 are down here. So I've got to come from 59 to 1 and 50, no, 59 to 2 and 58 to 1. So those are going to be some really fine jumper wires. I actually have that kind of sort of uh, jumper wire so I can do this. But uh, I'm certainly not going to shoot any video of me doing it. I'll show you when I'm done. Uh, just a quick shot of myself. This is uh, what I had to wear to do the uh, jumper wires where the uh, USB hub Ethernet chip used to be. So I picked this up at Harbor Freight. I don't know exactly what the magnification is, but uh, this this comes down and amplifies it. And there's a second set of uh, focals in here, so I can actually see um, really fine with this flip down lens in here and then this thing just goes nuts I can I can see the the hair follicles on a on a mouse with this thing so let's go and look at my work uh, while looking around on the uh, Model B schematic I noticed that it had zero ohm resistors between R36 and R37 um, on my board, R36 and R37 weren't installed. So those appear to be the enable um, to bypass the missing chip. So if you remove that chip like I did, you just install these too and it should enable um, the lower USB jack. Now it's booted up and the password seems to be or the keyboard seems to be working. So, uh, R36 and R37, just jumper those after you remove the chip. That was nice and simple. A whole lot easier than what I was thinking of doing. Here's the schematic. You can see right here, R36 0, R37 0. They go from, here's the BCM2835 USB pins down to LAN, which is the chip I removed, LAN 9512. So they tap into that, and when these are installed, they bypass the LAN chip's output and go straight to one of the two USB ports. It is the lower USB port.